Caribou stands, stand up, gather around, and hit that like button because this video is for you. And for those of you wondering if there are even caribou stands out there, yes, they do exist, and I'm gonna explain why. Because I didn't know they existed either, and I didn't understand why. In videos like my potential Grand Fleet video and my next Straw Hat video, there were a good amount of comments mentioning caribou. Like, hey, why didn't you bring up caribou? I think you're really missing the point of caribou. And honestly, I kind of brushed them off. I was like, what are these guys talking about? Like, it's caribou, he's a terrible person, he's not really connected to do straw hats at all. But during this past two week break that One Piece has gone on, I took a little break as well, and I've been doing some rereading. I've been rereading post time skip, and right now I'm just about done with Dress Rosa, but this rereading has really allowed me to reanalyze Caribou's story. It's a lot more fresh in my mind, and honestly, it's kind of changed my perspective on his character. And on top of that, I genuinely believe there's a chance that Caribou actually joins the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. So what changed? Well, the biggest thing that changed for me was reading Caribou's Cover story. This was a 46 volume cover story that I just never read before. I was anime only through Dress Rosa. I only started reading the manga once I caught up to the story in Zo. So this Caribou cover story, I just never knew about. And this cover story not only really ties Caribou's story together a lot more, so we don't have this huge gap from when he's there in Fishman Island and now shows up in Wano, but the cover story itself really changed my perspective of his character and what the future of his story could be. Because as I mentioned, Caribou for me just didn't feel that connected to the story and he's overall a terrible person so he just didn't fit in that potential category for a Straw Hat Grand Fleet member. Obviously he became very relevant to the story once he found out about Shirahoshi being an ancient weapon but as far as the future of his character it just didn't feel that connected to the Straw Hat storyline to where he would end up being in the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. But taking that aside if we're just looking at Caribou's strength he's kind of qualified. When he was first introduced, he was really introduced as this new hot shot rookie, probably the strongest rookie on Sabote when the Straw Hats returned to Sabote. He rocks a Logio Devil Fruit, so just with that alone, he's very strong. And his bounty is 210 million. Since we're talking about the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, comparing that to the other members, other captains of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, that ties him for second with Sai and also puts him above Bartolomeo, who has a bounty of 200 million. And that comparison is actually pretty important if you think about it, because they're kind of from the same generation. Both of them came with that next wave of pirates after the worst generation. If anything, maybe they're a year apart in their adventure, but they're within that same generation, so their adventures are definitely comparable. So at the very least, Caribou having a bigger bounty means that he is more notorious than Bartolomeo. And bounties obviously don't have a direct correlation to strength, like Buggy, I'm sure his bounty is really high right now, despite him not being very strong. But I feel like Caribou's strength shouldn't be slept on either. The perception of how strong he is, I feel like kind of gets jumbled. In Sabote, he's kind of tied in with this gag and for most of Fishman Island, he's kind of just used as a gag as well. He's never really seen as much of a threat. Like after return to Sabote, he starts off by chasing after the Straw Hats in hopes of trying to defeat them. So his crew pulls up next to the Thousand Sunny and they're all about to hop on over to attack them. And Caribou is able to do that, but before the rest of the crew is able to do so, the one pulling their ship, ironically, is Momu. And Momu gets PTSD from Sanji and Luke Luffy and just jets away. So then Caribou is really just left by himself. So Caribou essentially just gets captured without really a chance to fight at all. But honestly, if we're thinking about it here, taking away the straw hat bias, how many Straw Hat crew members would actually defeat Caribou in a one-on-one -on -one fight? Obviously, Sanji, Zoro, Jinbei, and Luffy would mop the floor with Caribou. But the rest of the Straw Hats, without Haki or Sea Stone, could they defeat a Logia like Caribou? Like in a serious fight, I would like to think some of the Straw Hats would be able to come up with some counters and be able to counter Caribou and win the battle. But with Caribou being a Logia and him having that big advantage of them essentially not being able to attack him, I'm really not that confident in the rest of the Straw Hats winning a one-on-one -on -one fight against Caribou. Now, I'm not trying to start any toxic power scaling conversations here of Caribou versus the Straw Hat Pirates. All I'm saying is strength-wise, we need to respect Caribou a little more because the way he's been perceived and used as a gag in a way kind of diminishes his power, but he's actually pretty strong. He has taken some L's in the story, he got bodied by Jinbei, got bodied by Peckhams, got bodied by X Drake, but those are all pretty strong people. Even like Peckhams has a 330 million berry bounty. Plus, Caribou just entered a new world as well, so he's 
definitely not quite used to everybody having hockey right away and being countered so easily. But overall, his strength is pretty strong just with his devil fruit alone. Like if you think about it, how many of the captains of the Grand Fleet would you take against Caribou? Cavendish, Bartolomeo, Sai, yes, probably. But what about after that? Like Ideo, I don't know if he's got hockey and could really take out Caribou. Hadrudin, maybe. Leo or Lumbus, when it comes to those guys, I don't really, actually Leo, let's talk about Leo. Leo would just get wiped by Caribou because Caribou would just lie to him the whole time. But yeah, the lower ends of the Grand Fleet captains, I'm really not that confident in taking them over Caribou either. So in terms of just adding another strong captain to the Grand Fleet, Caribou would definitely fit under that bill. But strength was never the issue for Caribou. The big issue is he's an absolute scumbag. Like one of the reasons he has such a high bounty is because he went and killed a bunch of Marines during his adventure. And on Fishman Island, he was literally trying to steal mermaids and sell them off as slaves. Eventually tried to do the same thing with Shirahoshi as well. And like, that's a terrible thing to do. Like these are the exact same things that the Celestial Dragons and the slave traders on Sabodi were trying to do. So right off the bat, he's really being portrayed as this terrible, terrible human being, which is why I just never thought he would get redeemed somehow. However, as I mentioned, the cover story changed my opinion. Now, for those of you that did not read that cover story, you might be thinking like, oh, okay, like did he all of a sudden become a saint in this cover story and just completely redeem himself? And the answer is actually no, because for most of the cover story, he's still a scumbag. The cover story literally starts off with him and Fishman Island trying to once again kidnap the mermaids. But luckily, Jinbei is there and Jinbei bodies him and then captures him. And then Jinbei ends up taking him to the G5 Marine base. But before the Marines are able to even do anything with Caribou, his crew shows up to rescue him. His brother and the rest of his crew come up, save him and start battling with the Marines. And how does he repay his loyal crew that came all the way to the Marine base to rescue him? By just abandoning them in the midst of chaos and stealing a Marine ship and leaving. So at this point, you might be like, okay, this guy's obviously a terrible person. He doesn't even care about his own brother, his own crew. How's he gonna get redeemed, man? How's his character gonna change? But the cover story continues beyond that. First off, he gets shipwrecked. It was almost like divine intervention. There's a storm that comes and there's big waves that brush over and he absolutely gets wrecked. But when he wakes up, he's actually being nursed back to health by this old grandma. And then once again, he shows that he's not a good guy and like he's trying to steal her jewelry already. But she's still super nice to him. She's taking care of him. She packs him a lunchbox of meat pies and she tells him to go into town to grab something. And this is where the story takes a turn. When he goes into town, the townspeople misidentify him as a revolutionist named Gaburu. Now, as far as we know, Gaburu is just a local revolutionist and doesn't have any ties to the actual revolutionary army, or at least nothing's been confirmed on that yet. But Gaburu is supposed to be dead. However, Caribou just coincidentally looks a lot like him. So the townspeople think Gaburu is alive again. They go and they start a revolution in their town once again. And lo and behold, that town is actually part of Kaido's territory. So one of the beast pirates, Scotch, just comes into town and just absolutely demolishes all the citizens, shuts down the revolution and lights the town on fire. And in the midst of this chaos, Caribou goes back to the house and finds the old grandma injured, lying on the ground and her house is on fire. So you might be thinking, oh, this is where Caribou gets his redemption. He turns around here and helps out the old grandma. And no, that's not what happens because Scotch comes back with a big old gun and it's actually the old grandma that stands in between Scotch and Caribou and protects Caribou. And Caribou just takes this opportunity to escape and run away. But as he runs towards the coast, he sees a marine battleship and it turns out Koribu, his brother, and his crew escaped from that G5 marine base. And they came to rescue him and they're actually happy to see Caribou still alive and don't care the fact that he betrayed them. And Koribu recalls to this moment where their own grandmother was saying that brothers should not fight. And then after this is where Caribou decides that he's gonna go back into town. He dresses up like the revolutionist Gaburu and with his crew goes back into the town. He personally defeats Scotch and on top of that takes down the weapons factory in town. But as a result of that, he gets bodied by Egg Drake and ends up in Wano. So you tell me, is Caribou actually redeemed? You might say no, because he really didn't decide to go back and revenge and help the grandma in the town until after his crew showed up. But at the same time, he didn't have to go back. If he just wanted to portray him as somebody who's just flat out terrible and wanted to just save his own ass, you could have just had him leave with his crew. But he decides no, he dresses up as Gaburu and goes back to the town, defeats Scotch. And the big thing for me is that he took down the weapons factory. That was like the extra step. Because if he just took down Scotch, you could have just 
just said he wanted to take down somebody and get revenge. As I mentioned, he did like to kill Marines, so maybe he had that thirst for blood and that's why he went back. But him actually taking down that weapons factory tells me there was extra motivation there. So in my eyes, he's not completely redeemed. He's not a saint by any means. He's still not a great person, but now there's a path for him to get redeemed. And honestly, if we're looking at other Grand Fleet members, not all of them are great people either. Like Abdullah and Jeet, when they were introduced, they were literally portrayed as these backstabbing, dirty fighters. Just a pair of bounty hunters that would do anything to get their hands on some money. But those guys redeemed themselves when they ended up siding with Luffy. It's possible Caribou could undergo a similar type of character arc. Because we have to look at the big picture here as well. What is Caribou's role in the story? Like, what does Oda want to do with him? His story could have easily ended with that whole fake straw hat storyline in Sabote, but no, he continued on and chased the straw hat. And then he was kind of just being annoying in Fishman Island. You're like, okay, where is this going? And then he finds out the big information about Shirahoshi. So that was really the big storyline connected to him. And it could be as simple as Oda used him as a tool to get that information about Shirahoshi to Kaido. And now maybe that's why Kaido and Big Mom have that alliance because they have the information about Shirahoshi. They did mention that ancient weapons were what they were going after. So that could very well be Caribou's purpose. I could easily see him revealing that information. But at the same time, it hasn't been revealed yet that Caribou snitched. And I feel like the moment when they were announcing that they were going after the ancient weapons would have been a good moment to bring it all back together if that were true. Like Kato could have said, we're going after ancient weapons. Luckily for us, there was this slimy little brat that had this information about Shirahoshi and that would have driven up the motivations of this war to another level. But that didn't happen. It's still could happen, but as far as we know, Caribou did not snitch. So what else could his character be used for? Does he actually have a role in this war? And so far we haven't seen him at all in this war, but if he does get involved in this war, I think there is a path for his character to get developed and redeemed. The last time where we saw him was in Udon, where he was actually kind of useful. He was really the one that had the information about the Denden Mushis and the communication systems in Wano, and it was because of him that all the Denden Mushis were disabled in Udon, and that's why Queen and Kaido didn't find out about all the prisoners escaping. And when that happens, Raizo gives him credit for doing that. And on top of that, Caribou specifically says it's going to play a big role when we show up to the battlefield. So could that be foreshadowing that he actually has a bigger role in this war? There was also the moment when he first allied with Luffy in Udon. He specifically asked Luffy to be his subordinate. And he also asked Luffy for help to help him escape. And Luffy said yes. And even during that moment, you're kind of seeing Caribou's character and he still doesn't seem like a great person. It looks like he's trying to lie his way out of this just to save his own ass. But after Luffy decides to help him, he's kind of shocked by how easy it was. And I'm wondering, is that potential development for him like getting saved all these times? First with the grandma, now with Luffy, and also his brother who saved him before. Is this all going to add up for him to now decide to be a good person? Or at least potentially decide to serve under Luffy and the Straw Hats? And here's the thing with Luffy deciding to help him. Luffy, we know, is a very dense person and is very trusting. But at the same time, one of the best features about Luffy Luffy is how good he is at judging people's characters. So there are two ways to spin this interaction in my opinion. You could have it just play out in the surface level where Caribou is lying to Luffy and Luffy is dense and easily accepts him. Or you could have it on a deeper level where Caribou is not actually lying and he's actually slowly starting to change as a person and Luffy somehow just knew that and judged that and made the right decision. Now so far Caribou is nowhere to be seen in this war. But I think it's very much possible he could have been that shadowy figure that was looking after Jinbei and Robin and he could definitely still show up because I think he has some motivation to be in this war as well. Not only was he defeated by X Drake and captured by the Beast Pirates, but him destroying that weapons factory in that cover story, maybe he got a little inspired by Gaburu. You could spin in a way where he kind of gets inspired and now wants to help people out and kind of wants to become a revolutionary in a way. And honestly, I think a lot of us believe that the Straw Hat Grand Fleet is going to play a major role in the final war against the world government. And if Caribou turned a new leaf and wants to become a revolutionary, Revolutionary like Gaburu, it would kind of tie in all together that way. There's even a theory about Gaburu being a major figurehead of the actual Revolutionary Army because his facial structure looks kind of similar to one of the silhouetted figures of the Revolutionary Army. And it would be a very Oda thing to do to bring this very obscure cover page character and make him a big figurehead and kind of tie that into a caribou gag as well. I could definitely see that happening. But yeah, if caribou had that change of heart, I could definitely see him returning and participating in this war. And another factor to consider is his crew potentially showing up to Wano. Because I don't think Koribu and his crew gave up on him. And think about it, in this climax of the war, if Caribou all of a sudden shows up with his crew, that's another major boost to the alliance. Koribu is no joke either. He's rocking 190 million berry bounty and his crew overall, I'm guessing, is pretty strong as well. So I 
think there's definitely a path of motivation for Caribou to get involved in this war and really help out in this war. And if that were the case, I think post Wano, the path for Caribou's character, where does it lead? Maybe he actually just becomes a revolutionary and joins a revolutionary army. But if he's actually changed, I could definitely see him wanting to serve under Luffy. Because that's another thing a lot of people get wrong about the Grand Fleet. The Grand Fleet captains serve directly under Luffy. They're subservient to him. So when people bring up like Katakuri or Marco joining the Grand Fleet, the answer is no for me. Because those big guys are not going to serve under Luffy. They could help him out as allies, but joining the Grand Fleet means a whole different thing. And ironically, Caribou actually makes sense in that role. Now, a lot of this is hypothetical and he could just be easily used as a tool to deliver the ancient weapon information to Kaido. But my perspective on Caribou has definitely changed and I do think there is a chance that he could join the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. But what about you guys? What do you think about Caribou's character? Do you think there's actually a chance that he joins the Straw Hat Grand Fleet? Let me know in the comments below. But as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to keep up to date with this channel, please hit that subscribe button. The King Pirates crew is now over 6,100 members. If you want to interact with your fellow crew members, the King Pirates Discord is linked in the description below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm DKing4, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.